Good morning to you, our audience. Ted and Ed TV channel welcome each of you to our weekly Saturday broadcast where we give insightful views on economic, political, world, and environmental issues concerning how money connects those matters. Our hosts, Mr. Ted Harvey Sr. and Mr. Edward Bishop III, are now taking each of you into our world of money and its value, along with the evils that come from the greed of hoarding financial power. He that controls the gold controls the important decisions in this world. Good evening to you all out there in podcast land. We're here at the Ted and Ed TV channel, and we welcome you on us. Wednesday evening. Uh, this is Mr. Harvey and Mr. Bishop here uh, on air again. How you doing, Ted? I'm doing wonderful, man. There's so many things that's going on, man. I mean, um, all kind of good things and all kind of bad things. But let me just start with the good things. No, I'll start with the bad stuff, and then we get oh, the good stuff. No, in the <laughs> that's not the good stuff. Cause, yeah. cause politics, you know, that's your world. And I'm gonna tell you, I was so I was just excited, man. Last night, uh, Florida elected. I mean, well, he's not exactly elected. You know, the primary. He got a primary winner. Primary winner for for Florida. A black man in Florida has is running for governor. This is this is history making. And the guy is he is oh. he is the principal nominee for a major party. Yes. And uh, and uh, yeah, you know, he's not a third party candidate, he's a major party candidate, a Democrat yes. running for governor of Florida. And he's a he's Great. a yeah, he's he's a he's a very, you know, and he said it himself, you know, because they keep making fun of him because you know he's very articulate, very uh, aware and astute of all the uh, issues and what Floridians, in his mind, what he feels as though what Floridians need, and which is uh, access to health care, you know, uh, uh, equality as far as pay raises and the environment and education. Um, those four issues alone, if he tackles those four issues, because the one thing that he really emphasize is that he said President Obama was willing to give Florida two billion dollars to do mass transportation. Man, they offered them more than that. You you you're a little short man. They got I heard four, it was five, four or five it was four billion dollars that they offered to give to uh Scott and company and they refused it. Yeah and and they was willing to give us so many billions of dollars for Medicaid to help almost a million people in Florida that don't have health care. He he denied that to the Florida Floridians. Well, so you know, somebody needs to wake up and smell the coffee, man, because you know <clears throat> they walk around and people walk around and they see these homeless people or people that are you know not well off or you know in a bad shape. And then they want to turn their nose up at people. And when when funds are available, your funds, by the way, Floridian funds that that taxpayers pay and can help these people. Because let's face it, man, the church can't do everything. You know, the, you know, the church can't do everything. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, I know you're down in Florida, Ted, but. There are other states also who are okay, all right. uh, What's who, going have, on? who have <laughs> nominees for governor now in the major Democratic Party. <laughs> hey, you know, we got what else? We got two other folks out there running in November to be the governor of their states, prospective states, and that's uh, Stacey Abrams here in Georgia and Ben Jealous in what Maryland? Ooh, okay. Yeah, you know, I Ben, know, ben yeah. got the nomination there in Maryland just uh, quite a few months ago. Yeah, it was kind of quiet. You know, he, he won the nomination, kind of quiet. Nobody's saying a whole lot about him. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why. But uh, and then you got Stacy here, a uh, young black lady and stuff, uh, who was supposed to be very astute. She used to be uh, a, a power broker there for the Democratic Party, minority party here. 
in Georgia and stuff. She was a uh, head there for for a while there, so she's known amongst the uh, legislative people and stuff. But she is not very well known out there in the boondocks where us folks live at. I hadn't heard too much about her until she started running for the Democratic uh, uh, to be the Democratic nominee for, for governor here. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. But, but since that time, yeah, we, we've been hearing a lot about her, what she's about, about her family, where she came from. Uh, I guess she's a, a graduate of a major black college. She went off to a Ivy League school and everything to uh, get some degree there. I don't know if she's a, a lawyer, a full-time lawyer or not, but she's very smart, very astute uh, black lady and stuff. And I'm She's got a good chance, man. You know, yeah, well, I don't, know, to, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's better than Florida now, but I, I, he got a, he got a good shot too. He got a good shot, and uh, you know the main thing what we always preach is get engaged and vote, vote. some kind of way. Vote. You, you gotta vote. The most important thing, and the second most important thing is get engaged. Get engaged and because vote. you know. But now moving on. <laughs> We got so much, so much going on, man. Is that that is crazy? And one of the things that uh, <laughs> one thing you know, I wanted to find out what is next with uh, can Trump continue to govern? Well, I put that Ted into my agenda because it's. You would think with all those things going on around him, all his legal troubles, that it would affect his governing and stuff. It's not, it hasn't been very good from the beginning, but I thought that it was going to get a lot worse and stuff and that he was going to maybe go off into a cocoon and everything and maybe try to straighten himself out. So, uh, our, so his Republican Congress people and stuff can, easier it, it may become easier to defend his uh it, his acts of doing things illegally uh him being put into this thing with that indictment and stuff there from his uh his attorney uh for the state of new york and everything now they're going after his uh charity fund uh, trade organization and some of his businesses there in new york uh the uh county of uh county of manhattan there i guess is going after some of his other folks and stuff there his bookkeeper who's been with him for what 20 30 years i guess they done got they've gotten him to uh turn against trump and everything with now. His dad. So, the guy was with his dad as far back as that started out with his dad yeah so he's turned against him he he's turned everybody. to seven and he he knows everything, and you would, and that's the reason why I said that. It, is he going to be able to effectively govern with all that? But it looks like he might. He might still be having a little power and stuff there because he uh, went over there and endorsed uh, some candidates and stuff here in the primary this past Tuesday. Uh, he was the one who endorsed uh, Gillum's uh, uh, competition and stuff there, the Republican Party, and the guy won. Yeah, uh, he won. You know, Right. Against the established, yeah, against the establishment candidate they had already picked out. He mm-hmm. went over there into uh, Arizona there and picked this uh, Max Stalley out who was running for the U.S. Senate seat there. Uh, so I don't know, man. It's, he's, he's still got some economic, he still got some political power out there. And uh, well, yeah. let's let's face it, man. You know, like some of the things that he's doing. I would say it's temporary and and I could be wrong when he cut those taxes down to 21%, 20%, whatever it is. uh, He buoyed up the military, you know, put another, what, I don't know, 80 billion or $40 billion of money into the military. He, uh, when he cut those taxes, and he had to uh, repatriate those funds, billions of dollars to come over here uh, from all these corporations. He's um, did what the Republicans love, get the right uh, Supreme Court justices, these conservative judges, 
all over the country and then the Supreme Court, he's going to get another one. So uh, that's what's going on as far as his successes. And he's just he's just following the Republican playbook. And that's the reason why they're not saying anything about all of his uh, <laughs> craziness, you know, because the fact is that the man is doing what they could not do. You know, and now the thing is, the trade, these tariffs and trade, they are unequal. You know, I'm not saying that he's right what he's doing, but he's shaking up. He's shaking it up. And, and the people, uh, a lot of people love it because the fact is, is that uh, some of these things are, you know, uh, are very, very complicated. And really, you know, I don't think he knows what's going on and what's going to happen, but he's shaking it up. And and uh, and the thing is, is that one thing for sure is that China has hundreds of got thousands of American companies over there manufacturing all kinds of stuff. And they're partnering with China under that enterprise thing they got going over there. And so. A lot of these companies, if they if he keeps playing with those tariffs, those companies are going to come back over here, because right now the, the the tax rates are so low, you know they say, well, hey, if we got to go through all this and pay these tariffs, then we might as well come back to America, and that's what I think his thinking is. Now I'm, I could be wrong. Well, I could be wrong. there uh, things have to fall right, Ted, for this thing to turn out to be okay and stuff for us. Right now, it's creating a lot of pain and stuff for a lot of uh, farmers and people and stuff in areas and stuff that are Trump country. Uh, he just Republican gave them another Trump whatever, uh, five, six billion dollars. <laughs> well, not another one. That's that's the first payment that he's given them. He started out at 12, but he only gave them, what, six billion, I guess. Oh, okay. I thought it was yeah. another one that he gave them no, that he, one. No, he hadn't, they hadn't received that money. He had proposed to give them. 12 billion dollars and stuff and they cry and they cried about that said it wasn't enough so he finally uh decided to go ahead and release uh six billion and stuff for him to uh for the soybean uh producers and uh, farmers and stuff who raise soybean so uh he uh he's doing some things and stuff and everything but it's hurting a lot of industries and stuff out there there are a lot of companies and stuff now who are saying that they're gonna go out of business and stuff because the uh, he uh, put that tariff on aluminum and steel or whatever, and now they're paying the price and stuff and everything because things are costing them a lot more to uh, produce their products, so they think that they might go out of business. So in the meantime, we're hoping that maybe something would come about that them and China would come back and, and start working together and start doing some things and stuff and everything. But I think China and stuff is, is playing a game and stuff with Trump and stuff at this point. Uh, he is getting uh, these NAFTA folks back together. You see, uh, he's already uh, his uh, Treasury Secretary and the Commerce folks have brought Mexico into the United States over there to the capital, and they're supposed to be talking, trying to uh, put together agreement, and they got some tentative things and stuff going on, but it's nothing that's set in stone yet. And I guess after that had happened and stuff, and he started broadcasting about they're getting ready to do something, getting ready to do something, well, Canada... Uh, came in and said, hey, we want to get involved in this daggone thing too. And they came over here and stuff, not because Trump wanted them to come, but because some people in the Congress and stuff and everything had decided that they needed to have Canada. If they were going to have an agreement with, with Mexico, they needed to have Canada and stuff involved also. So they asked them to come over there and get involved in these outside entities. So maybe, maybe not. They might get another agreement and stuff with NAFTA. I don't know. But uh, until it happens, we're going to have to sit here and wait because he has a lot of stuff going on around us, Ted, a lot of stuff. You know, know. He, along, along with all that other stuff, he's fighting these people. He's over there fighting the, the Europeans and stuff. Now you had the, uh, 
the prime minister and stuff from France and stuff saying that they probably want to go it alone and stuff with this NATO stuff and everything that the Europeans are going to have to go about themselves because they can't depend on the United States to do anything. You've got Syria getting ready to go on. You've got Iran sitting out there and everything that he's fighting and stuff and everything. We're bombing, we bombing up got, uh, Yemen. Yeah, and, he, <laughs> and then you got North Korea and stuff that he thought that he had everything all settled up with old Kim Jong Un, and and now he's uh, uh, stopping that negotiations and stuff. There, he told the Secretary of State Pompeo to uh, you might as well stay at home because old Kim Jong is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. So he got a lot of battlefronts and stuff out there, and most of the people in his administration are are sitting there twiddling their thumb because they have no idea what the heck he wants to do. And it, yeah, well, you know, I mean, a lot of them really, I don't know if you say they got smart people around them, but I don't think so. He has, <laughs> he has rich people around him, not smart, <laughs> rich people. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, right. And that's the whole thing. And, and And when you, just before you said that, two of the people that came to mind, you know, his Chamber of Commerce and his Treasury Secretary, both of them are billionaires, multimillionaires. Absolutely. And, Ross um, is, yeah. yeah. Ross and Steve uh, Muchin, yeah, he's one of them uh, rich Jewish people. <laughs> so so the, the bottom line is, is that, I mean, they, they're, they're, you know, they're living like kings because under the, under the taxpayer dollar, but at the same time, they're making decisions that's going to benefit them. And they're in control of what's going to happen for them that's making the things best for them. And that's the thing. And that's why a lot of people, in my mind, you know, is raising up. I mean, going out in the streets, I don't think is a good thing. But what they're doing now is really important. Running for office, kicking those people out doing the best thing you can to, to talk to these people as many people as you can to realize that this is not the way to go at least at this point you know as far as because the american people are not getting their just due you know as far as uh certain things now there are a lot of people that's doing pretty well you know but what was that total on the, on the poor people's march 160 million people living from paycheck to paycheck Yep. Something like that. Yep. So out of 340 million, oh, 160, almost, oh, yeah, almost half yeah. of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. paycheck. So, so I, you know, I guess our government and everything thinks that as, if half of the people are doing okay, they must be doing a good job. Uh, yeah. you know, according, according to Trump, now half the people out there doing a good job. And he's, he said that he has a 52% favorability and stuff, or, but he got those numbers and stuff wrong. His favorability is only like 44% and stuff. Actually, uh, they had put out some numbers and stuff, you know, polling and stuff about him and where he's at. And even after all this other crisis and stuff going on and stuff, his polling numbers are still remain the same. But we don't know what's going to happen down the road. We don't know what's going to happen come November. And those numbers and stuff in there, I think as far as polling and that thing, uh, means a lot because it tells it gives you a parameter and stuff of where he's at and what people feel about him and if he's going to be able to uh, continue to have a Congress that he can control. Well, you know, polling is a funny thing because they had Gilliam. <laughs> he wasn't Way even running. Out. He, wasn't, he wasn't even in the running. He wasn't so even in kinda... third place about two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, Their polling said he wasn't even in third place and the man right. came along and won. So, so, so whoever these people they're polling, um, you know, it really is insignificant to a certain degree because you know one person in poverty is too many, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, yeah. and, and 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 there's no reason why people are should be in poverty because this is the richest nation in the world. Um, you know, I've heard people talk about they went all over the world and and looked at different countries and. And uh, they were saying that uh, one person, I heard somebody on the radio say when they went to Canada and they went to some functions and they drove all around, this was Tar Tom Hartman. And he said he didn't see hardly, he said he didn't see any property. And he said he went all over that place, you know. And the thing is, 
is that there there should be no poverty in this country right now. It really shouldn't be, you know, because of the fact is is that they're not laying out the land, the, uh, doling out the funds the way they should be. You know, and they're not providing because you know when someone gets sick and they have to spend a whole lot of money for their health care, or someone lose a job, or whatever the case may be. You know, those safety nets should cover their things. If somebody have a bad accident and then they have to get on disability and that type of thing. And you have people that are that have mental problems. You know, we just had an incident uh, a few days ago up in Jacksonville, had an incident up there and the guy, <laughs> he was already diagnosed as a mental problem. So, you know, these things should be taken care of and people are not really focus on those things. They're just focused on the national agenda, the international agenda, you know, uh, you know, just trying to keep making money instead of taking care of the people. And uh, this is the one thing that, uh, that in my mind, I think Gillian brings to the table. I mean, I like his agenda as far as when he talks about, um, you know, he's a progressive, but he's not a socialist. He's a Democrat. And he oh. sticks to the <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I beg to differ with you because you consider the gentleman who came down there and Gillum stood beside him on the stages and everything. And once this guy came down there and stood with Gillum and told these people to vote for him, his polling numbers start going up. And you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, Bernie exactly. Sanders, to everybody calls a socialist, came down there and created a a uproar and everything for Andrew Gillum. And once he came down there a couple of weeks ago and he stood down there and did some politicking with him and everything, his numbers started rising after that. So, uh, well, I don't call he, he, well he, he, he stood on the stage and put his arm around Bernie Sanders. Hey, my buddy. Oh, 70 some year old Bernie Sanders, and everything started turning the right way and stuff for him. So sometimes when you bring well, Bernie got a ideas, you know, he got power. But you know, I, I agree. You know, I, I like I, I said it last week, you know, I agree that Medicare should be for all. Yeah. Education should be free. Absolutely. And, um, you know, <laughs> one of the things, you know, we just heard the other day that uh, the person that's over these all these school loans over a trillion dollars mm -hmm. he, he went on and resigned because what they're getting ready to do is privatize all of those loans and then they're going to start pressuring these students for payments payment well they're, pres they're, they're pressuring these students already Ted. it's not something new here they're pressuring these kids already they're raising the interest rates and stuff up on these kids and stuff if they don't pay their student loans or whatever, or if the parent have signed a student loan, they're going after them too. Yeah. And, you know, let them be late on the payment, man. They, they started doubling and tripling the interest rates and everything that these kids are going to have to pay. All the attorney fees, legal fees, and all that other stuff. They're dumping all this stuff on these kids and stuff who went out and got these student loans. Yeah. So, and you know, and this, this is the effect that this is the negative effect on on uh 45. Oh, and it's a negative yeah. effect on this country in a whole because we should be sending our kids to school for a free education. They need to have be able to go to school and not have to spend all that money to go and get them an education so they can do better for themselves. It's that is unreal, Ted. I, I can't if it's a socialist idea, then I'm socialist because I believe in having these colleges be free for kids if nothing if not just the major universities your communities colleges and stuff should be free yeah absolutely yeah and you know so we got one through 12 and a lot of if you notice that some of these schools are actually uh agreeing with them some of them are uh trying to do that and uh i mean so it's just a small few of them but still is 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 still you know, the thing that that's important is that these these young people get into the fields that they love and, and what they want to study and 
and those people that don't want to go to college, then they should have the opportunity to get a trade, you know, get a skill and do what they want to do to make money. And that's to me is the, is the right thing to do as far as education. And they should be paying these teachers much more than, they, than, than what they're paying. A lot more, a lot more. And you are seeing that a lot of these teachers and stuff are, are going on a strike in these states. You had Kentucky, uh, Oklahoma, all their teachers are going down on strike. I think Arizona, they had teachers going mm -hmm. on a strike or whatever. Mm -hmm. Cause they wasn't paying them anything, man. They, when you, they start telling, telling you, uh, putting in the news and stuff, how much these teachers were, were making, it was horrible, man. Some of these teachers were living almost in poverty, man. And they out there teaching our children. Yep. Major high schools and what have you, and and you know uh, they got this tier system, you know, like if you've been there for so many years, or if you got a master's, and you got a PhD and what have you, then you get a little bit more money, you get a little bit more money. But the point is, is that when you're a teacher, you know, you should be starting off at you know twenty seven dollars an hour or you know twenty five dollars an hour, you know, because you know. <laughs> I substituted and I did it for like six months. You know what they pay you for substituting? In Florida now. In Florida. <laughs> okay. In Florida. Some other states pay more. Go ahead. Oh, oh well, I mean, Florida pays more too. In South Florida, they pay twenty dollars an hour, but but here they pay ten dollars an hour. <laughs> you know, I say I'm wasting my time. You know, I love the kids. The kids love me. You know. And 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 you know they call me Mr. Yeah, Harvey and all $10 that. Ten dollars an hour. Ten dollars to teach you. Ten man an hour. And I looked at that and I and I only did it three days a week. You know, I, I I just did it three days a week. And and they wanted me. You know, they kept on asking me, uh, "Can you take care of this class for the rest of the year?" No. Uh. -uh. And I told them, I say, "You pay me more money, yeah." You want me? To, you want me to go through the whole year with this class, and you don't want to pay me, you know, at least twenty dollars an hour. Hey, that ain't well, happening. I didn't, I didn't know it was that cheap, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. well, it might be ten dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. That's horrible. And That's then you horrible. don't get no. And then you don't get no bennies. You don't get no benefits. Yeah, and if you don't come to work that day. You know uh, what's going to happen because you're a substitute, right? Uh -huh. So you don't get paid that day. <laughs> hey, man, I know it was that bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible, man. It's horrible. And but anyway, man, let's let's get on something else here because yeah. like you got you got so much stuff here that um, there's a lot going on, Ted. There's a lot going on out there that affects the people that we are talking to and stuff right now, our audience out there. Now, a lot of things that we'd be talking about, uh, a lot of people might think, well, I bet that, uh, you know, what Trump's doing with tariffs is not affecting me. Yes, it will. It's when you go to the grocery store, it's going to affect you. When you're buying a product and stuff that's made out of steel or aluminum, like your cars and stuff, it's going to affect you. Everything so, is going to go up. Everything, yeah, everything is going to go up. And you're seeing now with this oil stuff going on, the gas is starting to rise back up. It's coming back down a little bit, but it's starting to go back up because these people out there are manipulating that market. You know, you got Venezuela out there not producing as much oil out there. You got uh, Trump telling our uh, people don't buy oil from Iran or whatever. Man, those things affect the bottom line and stuff for uh, people who every day go out there and putting gas in their cars. And when you go from paying uh, $30, $35 to $75 to fill your tank up, man, so you can get back and forth to work, that that's your hurting. Parking. That's hurting. Yeah, and if you got to do two tanks, man, you know, that's an extra hundred and something dollars out of your pocket. Absolutely. And you haven't even got to work yet. You try right. trying to get there, <laughs> so, so you know. it's it's yeah it's a it is a it is a real real mess out there. Some of the things that we're talking about, I know we've been talking the news people been talking about for a long long time, but you know there's something has to be done and have people have to stay on top of it. You just can't just uh, uh, let people rob you. Uh, well, that's and, what they're doing. That's what they're doing. But now you mentioned uh, forty five. What about his children? 
What's going oh, on? Man. They, they, uh, they getting ready to start uh, bumping their heads, I guess you might say. <laughs> uh, they're involved in the business and everything. And uh, when Trump became president, uh, they have a law out there we call, has something to do with, they call it emolement. Uh, it's a kind of a strange word there, but he can't profit from being the president. So he put his his the operations of his corporation under his children's name. Now, earlier we talked about his bookkeeper, Tony Stakes Evidence. Well, his bookkeeper and the kids and stuff out there now are still running their business and everything, and things are happening and stuff that he know that the bookkeeper knows about that's going to affect those children because they're running in that business. His sons, uh, uh, Donald Jr. and Eric, I guess he called him, and Ivanka, they are, I'm pretty sure that they're not sleeping very well at night. <laughs> oh, yeah, this they're, kid, not like, they're, not, they're not like their dad and stuff who doesn't care about anything. He sit out there with his old uh, messed up red hair and everything trying to die and stuff. And uh, he just walk around like he it doesn't matter to him and stuff. But when you uh, aren't like when your children and stuff become affected because of what's going on, what he has done illegally, then uh, it's it starts it starts getting to you. You know, when people start coming in and looking at your income, and eventually it looks like they're going to be getting his tax returns. And once they get them tax returns, man, you know, anything illegal that he has done, those tax returns are going to show it. Uh, right now, he's been, he's fought them off, successfully fought them off from getting them. But he's at a place and stuff now, as far as all these legal things going on, that it could create some problems and stuff for his family. Big problems and stuff for him because they don't have the office of the presidency protecting them. They are at, they are ordinary citizens out there, just like you and I. And if you've done something wrong, they can immediately indict you without doing anything at all. Knowing, and their dad, they probably think can help them out because he can give them pardon, but he can only pardon for federal crimes, not state crimes. Well, there you go, and that's the reason why uh, Manafort <laughs> might be man. Able to Paul, it, it, Paul's it, it's just like Michael Cohen was his attorney. Paul's he's holding out, hoping that that Trump's going to pardon him. But some things are going on and stuff now, Ted, that we need to be watching out for. Uh, Trump's attorney and stuff now had just put out today that he is resigning. Right, <laughs> and actually. He has his 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 White House lawyer and stuff has kept him from doing things worse than you know from really hurting himself. Uh, he kept him away from firing uh, Sessions, the Attorney General. Uh, he's kept him away from doing some some bad things, from pardoning uh, Manafort, from maybe even trying to pardon uh, Michael Cohen or whatever, uh, or trying to uh, uh, dismiss Mueller and stuff as the uh, prosecutor special counsel and stuff out there for the uh russian investigation so if he leaves and he says he's going to be leaving and stuff i don't know who's going to be able to who's going to be that that calming effect within the uh, white house to uh stop uh trump from doing anything because he doesn't listen to anybody else at all other than his uh his counsel and stuff there he does listen to his daughter sometimes but right now i don't believe she has that much power and stuff to stop her dad from doing anything so wow. it's, 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 it's going to get really, really, really uh, nasty around there, all the way up, man, until the uh, midterms elections are over. And if the Democrats take over the House and stuff and, uh, and after the midterms and stuff, well, he's going to have uh, the heat's going to be on, but it's, it is going to be on. It, it is going to start. They're going to ratchet up that heat. Uh, most people and stuff. Like I said, I thought after all this stuff was going on, he was kind of like calming himself down, but he's gotten worse. It seemed like he's just going crazy. Uh, and all this stuff is affecting us as a country. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, th this big thing that happened and stuff or what on Friday, Saturday, John McCain passing away and stuff there, you know, that uh, the old Maverick John, 
he's got his uh, funeral and stuff coming up this uh, weekend on Saturday. I guess uh, Bush and uh, Obama's going to eulogize him and stuff there. And even in in his going into to the grave, he is uh, 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 snubbing his nose at at Trump. <laughs> he told him, "I don't want him at my funeral. <laughs> he can't come." <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> so he's been snubbed twice. He's been snubbed, man. He told him, "Don't come to my funeral, please." And he was snubbed at the uh, at the uh, at the um, wedding at the uh, wedding over over in Europe. Right, they didn't like him. He's not he's not a likable person, uh, Ted. He's not very likable at all. Anybody who's got anything going on, they don't like him. Even uh, John McCain, who was a Republican. Doesn't like him, you know. He was all uh, Trump you know, belittled him and stuff in public and stuff on several occasions, uh, talking about his uh, being a hero and stuff there. And he was a uh, he was a prisoner of war, and Trump acted like, well, I don't like people who are prisoners of war and their thing. They, they're not actually heroes or whatever. He's <laughs> man, it got something else. Well, we got us a president. Yeah, we got we got us a president, and it's 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 sad. However, the one thing that we got going is that we do have some people in the White House. Some <laughs> are they going to be able to control him? That's the point. Are they going to be able to control him because he is? He gets up at night and he, he starts roaming them hallways and getting him a an iPad and going on Twitter and just going crazy because you know he. He doesn't have anybody in the bedroom with him because supposedly he sleeps by himself. He has his wife don't have, so they don't stay in the same wing in the White House. Do you really <laughs> believe that, man? You know they got man, so many secret, they got man. so many secret entrances in the White House and exits. He probably sneaking the little prostitutes up there, man. I mean, I'm not saying he's doing it. But. He can be, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, I wouldn't put nothing past him, man. Because <laughs> I. It, and this this is very very obvious, and I know a lot of people probably don't see it and don't look at it. But it, whenever you see him going off on a trip now, late in the last month or two, she ain't with him. Right, right. He getting on that plane by himself. He getting on a helicopter by himself. He getting off by himself. That's right. Where's Melania? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea, man. Well, she got it's, what she wants. She got her parents. They're American citizens now. Yeah. You know, she probably got some kind of uh, stash money somewhere. She makes oh, all yeah. the money and all oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And but she, she got more comments. She got some comments. I know he didn't, he didn't put a lot in her bank account oh, to, yeah. keep her, to, to keep her there because of that, she'd be gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got a well, lot of money. Talking about being, being gone, uh, Jeff Sessions. <laughs> Oh, Jeffy boy. Oh, Jeffrey <laughs> boy. Let me just say this here. The Democrats, Feinstein, is speaking up for Jeff Sessions, talking about you can't fire him and all this Absolutely. mess. Absolutely. And, you know, what is, what is, you know, come on, man. Jeff Sessions is horrible. And for one, for one thing, Ted, that they think that he has stood up against and stuff and everything is the firing of Robert Mueller. And that is exactly why she is standing up for him because they want to keep that investigation and stuff of the Russians and stuff coming in here, interfering in our election. They want to keep that alive. And you are right, man. He's done a lot of bad things. This, this thing with, with these kids and stuff being uh, taken away from their parents. He was the one who started that. Yeah. He started that. I mean, and, that's some cold yeah. stuff there, man. He started that. Yeah. He started that. He, he's going out now and getting tough on crime and stuff now. All these uh, people out there who are in jails or whatever, he's telling these people to increase their crimes. Uh, the police officers and stuff who are killing black folks and everything. Go ahead. Do what you want to do. In essence, he's saying you can kill whoever you want to kill. You're not going to be bothered. So he is a uh, he, he's a uh, he, he's bad out there, but he's doing one thing that's right that's probably keeping him keeping the Democrats at least on his side because you see the Republicans now are abandoning the ship just like rats. 
they abandon his chip quick. You know, when you see his buddy over there from South Carolina abandon him and tell him that, you know, it's okay that the president needs somebody he can trust, you know things are bad. <coughs> well, Excuse me. well uh, the one thing that, you know, uh, when you're talking about Graham. Yeah, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, <laughs> he don't know where to go now. He lost. Well, he's Trump. Something's happened to it with him. Something has happened. He's been bought because because out of all the Republicans out there, the only one who was really actually trying to keep Beauregard in there is uh, McDonald. McConnell. I'm sorry. He uh, he's the only one to try to stop that because he knows that if Trump does fire him, it's going to create a problem and stuff in the Senate. Because they they are trying to get as many uh, uh, judges and stuff, conservative judges in office and stuff right now while they can, because they have no they idea got what's going on. They, they got a know. bunch of them. They trying it and they're trying to put that Kavanaugh and stuff in. If Trump fires Jeff Sessions, they're going to have to have a confirmation and stuff for an attorney general which is going to screw up what's going on there with Kavanaugh being confirmed as a Supreme Court justice. And McConnell knows that. So he's, he, he's, he's, he's sitting there and uh, he's telling uh, Donald, don't fire him. Wait until after the midterms. Don't do that. Wait until after the midterms, which after the midterms, they are hoping and McConnell is hoping that he can get this Kavanaugh and stuff, uh, 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 you know, approved as attorney uh, as as the uh, Supreme Court justice and stuff. You know, and sometime in October. So uh, if he does fire him, it's going to create a lot of problems there in the Senate. A lot of problems, and they may not be able to confirm uh, Kavanaugh to be the Supreme Court justice. So, well, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, so, well, so things are. Things you know, are, talking about sessions. You know, with his. Uh, Privatizing all this uh, these prisons, prisons, privatizing yeah. prisons. One of the thing, one of the things is in this uh, prison industrial complex, man, is really right now. You got all across the country, man. There are more than seventeen major prisons that are on strike right now, and uh, the the they're planning to go off strike on September 9th. Um, these people have been treated like basically animals. I'm talking about these hardcore uh, prisons. I mean, some of them are, you know, hardcore, <laughs> they're hardcore criminals, but at the same time, they're still human, you know, and, and humanity, you know, you know, you know, people don't even treat dogs the way they're treating these, some of these people. I mean, things that I've been reading about, uh, all kinds of, you know, filth, all kind of, you know, sorry food, uh, they work them. Uh, they work them for corporations. You got even some of these prisoners that's even being firefighters. They sending them out to, you know, to California to fight the fires, and, and they working for major corporations. Uh, uh, so what they've decided to do, they 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 have so many organizations, about anywhere between two to three hundred organizations, nonprofit organizations that are standing up for them across the country, to try to better their condition. And so these people are, are fighting for these prisoners so that they can live a better life. You have so many people that are in there, but they're nonviolent. You know, they might have, uh, you know, broken a house or whatever, whatever, but they're nonviolent. You know, they, they, uh, they have not committed or hurt, hurt, harmed anyone. And so now these people are being treated like worse than dogs. You know, they, you know they're just being treated worse than dogs. And when they do get a job, they have to work eight hours a day. They make five cents, 10 cents an hour. <laughs> so, you know, they might make a dollar, two dollars a day. You know, and so they're calling it what it really is, is uh, slavery. That's what it is. That's what it is, slavery. You know, you got a, you got a place to stay, a, a roof over your head, but just think, you 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 stand in those cells, man. I bet you the you in, is not good. The air condition is not good. And you in chains. And, <laughs> and you in chains. They chaining you up and taking you out. So it's well, yeah. yeah. 
so it's it's horrible man so so the thing is is that it's supposed to be rehabilitation that's what it's supposed to be you're supposed to rehabilitate people and then and from what things that i've read they said like a large percentage of those people are are have a mental condition oh yeah mm-hmm they have a mental condition. See, so so here's here's what I'm saying, okay? And you always have to bring it to the church. You know, I mean, because you know something is going on with this religious thing, man. We got Catholic people raping nuns, molesting babies, priests. I'm talking about big time priests. I mean, and and you got you got you got ministers divorcing each other, and divorcing their 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 wives, you know, and it's all kind of craziness that's going on, man. And and it's and and, and their big thing is their weird jitsu is uh, no abortion. That's their main thing. They they're against gays, you know, or homosexuals, trans, you know, they're against that. Uh, so, but then at the same time, you got hundreds of thousands of people that are in prison and a lot of them for petty stuff. Right now, man, you got uh, so many hundreds of thousands of people are in jail that have not even, they don't even have a crime. They haven't even labeled a crime for what this person has done. They just don't have the bail money to get out. And you know this is this is sad. This is sad, and 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 that's what people are outraged about. They're outraged because you're destroying families. You're destroying families. A lot of these people have children, mothers, fathers, their mothers and their fathers, their sons, their daughters, and they have they have children. And and uh, where's the humanity in all of that? This is supposed. To, this is a. a supposed to be a great nation a great nation and they're treating uh people like this that's the that's the sad part about it so to me um there's nothing i can do there's nothing i can do but just pray for the prisoners that's all i can do i mean i can visit them i can you know you can preach all you want to them but i ain't gonna do no good for them because they need to be treated fairly and they should you know there's nothing wrong with working yeah okay well if you're gonna work if you're gonna work them pay them some money well ted you know that's always been <laughs> excuse me that's always been uh a mantra and stuff of being in prison and stuff there they i, I guess they feel that by releasing them out of their cages and stuff and let them come out and breathe fresh air that should be good enough payment and stuff for them so you know as they're coming out there and they're doing these jobs and stuff outside the prison and they only paying them pennies and stuff somebody out there is making money off of their work oh big uh, time whether, whether it's uh it's the uh the companies and stuff who are using them whether it's the uh the states and stuff and everything who don't have to pay someone to go out there to clean the highways and stuff off they, they've been doing that for a long time they have right here in the south and stuff you know we got chain gangs all the time so people are out there doing something but I wanted to get back to one thing that happened and stuff. You start talking about these ministers and them abusing uh, kids and all this other stuff, and I kind of smile. Well, I it wasn't that smile and stuff wasn't because of what these ministers and stuff were doing. It was because and when you start bringing up this thing about these ministers and stuff, it brought into my mind about uh, all these black ministers and stuff who went and sat there at the table with Trump. Mm, yes and that was why i smile and stuff because of that i thought we were going to get to that point and everything but we didn't it got off to something else but i didn't want anybody to think you know that i was smiling about uh the fact that uh children are being abused by these priests and everything and these ministers and they're doing all these uh really horrible things or whatever i was just my mind just quickly went back to that because I wanted to talk about that, you know, just a little bit and stuff, maybe not today, uh, probably Saturday or whatever, because it's been, it was a, a disgraceful incident and stuff that happened. And to see our 
black ministers and stuff sitting down there at the table and stuff with Trump and praising him just like he was uh, uh, licking his feet almost, you know, kissing his ring uh, to act for his uh, his grace and mercy and stuff just just didn't go well with me. Um, I, I just can't believe and stuff that these guys and stuff are sitting there in the pulpit and everything and preaching to uh, their congregation that this man is the best thing that happened to them when they are being, uh, they're taking their social security checks from them. They are taking uh, food and stuff out of their children's mouths. He, he's, he's sponsoring and stuff, these things and stuff where these kids and stuff can't go to school and stuff and learn because they don't have, they're cutting back on food stamps programs and stuff like that. And for them School's to sit there, dollar. yeah, yeah, man, it, it's just horrible. And and they're sitting there in this pulpit with big congregations talking to their people and, and have the nerve to sit there and say that this man is the best thing that happened to them. I it, it No, he said the best thing that ever happened to black people. <laughs> Well, that's the congregation. <laughs> most, of my, most of my black ministers, most of their congregation are black. And they are listening to, to this stuff. And, and you know how we are as far as religion is. You know, if our pastor says somebody to pull up it, it must be the word that comes from God. And it really not. But, you know, to have them to do that and everything is just horrible, Ted. I, but I had to say something about it. It was just something that had to be well, said. You mentioned food stamps and okay, and you know, I'm gonna mention this Medicare's uh, Social Security. We have a thing now that's uh, 45 had brought up, and he said that he's gonna start this new department, which is gonna call it Space Force. Now, uh, I was trying to do a little research on it, and it's pretty interesting. Because, see, a lot of this Space Force thing is coming about, even though the Air Force has already sort of kind of put some stuff together to protect the space. And the reason why is because these corporations are putting up so many satellites. Our GPS satellites are out there and they need to be protected or, you know, some kind of way, you know, like they can be hit with meteors or whatever. And uh, my understanding, I heard a program saying that there's something like 500 million, you know, little meters running out there and they can be hit at any time. And then we're depending on these satellites for so many things, you know, mm -hmm. our ATM systems, our, <laughs> our, our lights some, in some cases and, and, and uh, cell phones and all of that, you know, so. So the thing is, and then they're talking about even putting more up there. It's like a, a few hundred now, but they're talking about putting over 2,000 of them. And these things, some of these satellites, man, uh, cost over a half a billion dollars, you know, to, to, to make. Somebody making a lot of money off these satellites. So, so. Uh, well, and they are figuring, Ted, that those are necessary evil because you we have to have those things because of our improved technology that's out there. Uh, and a lot of those things and stuff are for our national defense. OK, that's true. Yeah. And, and now here's the deal, though. Ed. The thing is, is that right now there is a space war to be uh, is projecting right now because China is doing the same thing. Russia is talking about doing the same thing. And because, you know, when you're talking about nuclear weapons, if you put one of those things up in space, you can shoot down whatever you want to shoot down or, or destroy whatever city you want to at any time, you know, coming from so many feet. Now, that's way off down the line because, you know, who can say that, you know, you're going to hit the exact target or whatever, you know, and maybe technology is that advanced already. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that this space war is is a battle who's going to control the universe that's this is for real well ted uh, i <laughs> guess you must have a short memory but i have a long memory stuff because i remember when john f kennedy got involved in a space war with russia who was going to be the first man out of space who was going to be the first man on the moon so 
this space war thing, it's been going on since the early 60s and it's still going on now and it's 2018. So yeah. it's 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 been around for a long, long, long time. But we didn't have the technology and, like we have now though. But that's because everything has improved. As the years go by, you improve what what you're doing. You know, we started he started NASA and everything. We got there was a race of space then. There was a lot of money being spent. And a lot of people were talking about that. Why do we need this? Well, when you say a lot of money, let's put it like this. This is what the goal is. The goal for this space force, that was what 45 called it, is to cut back on Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. And take that fund uh, out. And we spoke about this earlier, Ted. He can't do nothing about that stuff unless the Congress approves it. And ain't no way Congress gonna approve that, even though they're Republican Congress. It's not gonna happen. Those three things are what we call out there on the subway, that third rail. And you know what that third rail is. It's electrified. You touch it, you're gonna die. And he, he he can talk all he want about taking that money away out of these places and stuff. It ain't going to happen. They didn't already allocate it out of so many dollars out of Medicare. Tim, he he can't take that money out of Medicare, Ted, without the Congress approval. He can take only a few pennies and stuff out of there. There's trillions of dollars in that they're going to fund. He can take a few dollars and stuff and everything, but he can't not take this stuff and start all this stuff without the approval of Congress. It's impossible. And he is not messing with Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security. I don't care what's happening. Republicans or Democrats, they're not going to bother it. All right. They're not going to bother it. I'm, I'm glad you me, got the confidence. I, I got the confidence in the world. Once When I saw them knock W down, when he tried to privatized Social Security, I said, nope, it ain't going to have to happen. Ain't no Republic going to be able to do anything about that. <laughs> then I don't bother. But anyway, he can say what he wants to say is you can open your mouth and say anything that you want to say is what happens and stuff. Uh, the actual proof that that has happened. That's when you start believing that stuff. But I don't believe it's going to happen. I really don't. I don't believe he has enough power and stuff to do that. He's got a like I said, a whole lot of irons in the fire, and he is in deep, deep, deep mess out there and stuff. So he's finding a lot of fronts there. And uh, when you got a lot of battle fronts going on, Ted, something's going to come up lucky. And you know that. You got yeah. this going on, that going on, that going on, that going on. Something's going to come up lucky. Well, we, we, I'm hoping that uh, something does come up lacking because this man's <laughs> strategy is not. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's not conducive to the American people. It's not important because right now we got people over in Puerto Rico that's not doing well. Oh, man. Oh, God. Man, I'm... In Houston, is uh, Hawaii. Yeah, we got still all, hurting. Still hurting. And you got all of these situations that's going on. And and this, what he, you, you know, you see, I don't know if you, you, you do Twitter or not, but, you know, he talks about nonsense. It's this nonsense. Stuff that he put out there, man, it's just total nonsense. I don't, hey, I don't, we only got a few more minutes, man. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me All tell right, you, you've been wanting to talk a little bit about Michael K. Johnson. And no, his name's not Johnson. What is his, his name? name is Michael K. Williams. Michael K. Williams. I, this is what you got, Michael K. W Johnson. <laughs> oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was, it's Williams. It's, it's Williams. K. Okay. All right. Well, have, have at it, bro. Because, you know, you seem like you're enthusiastic of what he was talking about. You know, give us a little tidbit. Maybe we could talk about it a little bit more Saturday. Well, I don't know if everybody knows about Michael K. Williams, but he's an actor uh, who acted on this uh, well, on this show out there called the, uh, oh, man, I forget the name of the show. Dwight. Not, huh? Dwight. Dwight. Yeah. yeah, he was the main actor there on the wire. He's the one that's got the scar and stuff on his cheek and everything. Real dark guy, supposed to be playing a real bad guy. And he came on to uh, uh, one of the shows there, TV show, radio shows there in uh, New York. And they had him on as a uh, guest interviewer. And all during the time that he was talking and everything, I always thought that this man was a gangster or somebody who was really 
uh, you know, one of those hard nosed urban ghetto boys. And he he was, but he got himself into acting. And once he got into acting and stuff, he he started doing some uh, good things and stuff for himself, started making money to take for his family and everybody else around him. And he spoke about uh, going back into to the community because a lot of their shows and stuff on the wire originated out there in the ghetto, out there in in our urban areas and stuff. And a lot of the people and stuff who were extras and stuff came from the people who lived in those projects. And he spoke about how, because of what he had saw and stuff with them and how uh, people looked down upon the, the folks and stuff out there who live in these projects. They looked down on them because they got drugs going on, prostitution, everything going on. But he brought forth a, a something about what he felt about them as they came that there were a lot of bad things and stuff going on with them, but most of them who live in that situation don't want to live there. They just don't have any other uh, avenue to get out of that situation. But if they had an avenue to get out of their situation, they would leave it. And they, we, we can uh, at least start building up our, the, the community and stuff there. So what he had started to do and everything was to, uh, uh, go into the community and everything and started having programs and stuff there in Baltimore and in uh, Brooklyn there, uh, New York, uh, to uh, help uh, people and stuff who wanted to become actors to do the acting, to help people and stuff who had talent and everything to start using that talent to help them to get out of the ghetto. So that was one of the things that he had spoken about that I thought was very good. And I thought he had a real good idea and stuff about what to do about that that he was giving his part and he was act he was saying on the radio that every other actor and stuff out there he asked them to also give back if you came from that environment uh like uh 50 cent you know he came from there and he's now out there executive producer and stuff of a lot of shows out there he's making a lot of money and he's acting asking people like that to come back <laughs> and do something in the community instead of just walking away. So I, I thought that that was uh, something very special and stuff about him that I did not see out. And like I said, I always thought he was, uh, you know, a thug and he was not that way. I guess you have to sit down and talk with people and everything to understand where they're coming from. Yeah. I mean, looks, you know, you can't judge people by, you you can't know. judge people by their cover. Yeah, and by their book. Yeah. <laughs> Can't judge, Can't judge the book, book by the book. Right, right, right. That was yeah, the same. Yeah. And so, and, and so, you know, when you when you was talking, I was just thinking about that. And, you know, I have met so many hard looking, you know, I'm going to call them brothers, you know, and a lot of them are very intelligent, very smart. Uh, a lot of them are very, um, you know, when you listen to them talk, they already know what's going on. They they understand what's going on. They understand the situation. And the thing is, is that uh, it's sad, man. You know, and, 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 you know, when I say sad, I mean, the point is, is that so many people that have great ideas that want to do things, but it takes money. None of us were built or had a silver spoon in our in our mouths. Absolutely. Nobody gave us, you know, anything. We had to start from scrap. And and so the point is is that you have to uh respect every person, you know, and you know, and they give the respect back. And you and, and you honor them because of who they are. And not because they didn't, you know, what they call what is success. I mean, success is all is all in the mind, or what you think success is, or you know, successful. You know, you know, successful to people nowadays is all material stuff and all that crap. But to me, successful is survival. You know, especially <laughs> in this climate. You know, I mean, it's always been survival and 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 living a, the best life you can live. So it's a lot of so many smart, smart brothers. I mean, he just have a stage right now because he's an actor, right? right. And there's so many of them out there, man. It's just, you know, uh, I hang with two brothers at the uh, uh, fitness club and 
you know, they look like they some rough looking brothers. Hey, <laughs> and, hey. and, and, and we shoot around and we talk and laugh and and, and they cool. And, mm -hmm. and they got and they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is basically, you know, it, it's just that people need opportunity. People need, you know, they and need, that's the whole thing. They need a chance. They need yeah. a chance to do good. And yeah. we and we are just not doing that. Yeah, and I don't know what the answer is, you know, because you know, it's everybody has to, you know, have their own mission in life, their own, you know, mission. And you know, I certainly have my own mission. I have my own dreams. I have my own and 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 and, and what have you. But uh, but it's not robbing, stealing, killing selling drugs mm -hmm. well ted there's a lot of people out there who think who are doing that because they think they don't have another avenue but like you said they are man in that community and in the communities all over the all, all over the country man there are some smart people and stuff there in those ghetto some very very smart people some uh if nothing else they those are doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs and stuff down there. Uh, company they just didn't get the opportunity. They didn't get the they opportunity. They didn't get the opportunity. Had that opportunity. These schools, or maybe they were steered the wrong way, and you know, uh, like myself, man. You know, I, I didn't. You know, I went through a four-year school, but I had to go to junior college first. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, and, and because I didn't take college preparation courses mm -hmm. to prepare myself. So, so the point is, is that the bottom line is, is that a lot of people don't get the correct guidance when they're coming up, and that's the school system problem, you know. And and you've got a lot of schools and stuff out there who are, is a factor and stuff for, for violence. You know, we have to build up these schools and these communities and stuff and everything, and 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 use that school as a place of learning instead of a place of. Uh, robbing, stealing, and, and prostitution, and selling drugs or whatever, because a lot of it's going on there in these schools. And most of the teachers and stuff and everything, they are they are sitting there and everything, trying to do what they can. But it, it's a it's a uh, tsunami and stuff out there as far as bad things going on. You know, they're not keeping up. These kids are coming to class, man, with no books at all. They don't know anything about internet access. Yeah, they're like just that. coming to socialize, and you know. That's and it. That's, that's it, and see see who got the best clothes on, and who got the who can pick up the best girls, and oh, oh man, I like her. Or oh, where where in Nigeria, oh, I got the best tattoos on. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't know. It's a lot to say about that, but anyway, we're at the end of our program and stuff now, so uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you guys and stuff on Saturday morning. Saturday uh, morning. Yeah, I'll probably be in Chicago and stuff doing this broadcast and stuff there, so. And I'll be in, uh, I'll be in ATL. You be in ATL, and I'll be gone. I'm leaving ATL. You coming here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to go up and uh, do our duties and stuff as uh, the, uh, the uh, coming up matriarchs and stuff of our uh, generation here and everything. My uh, wife's uh, uncle and stuff is uh, having a bad time. He diabetes and stuff got him, and he had his leg cut off. So we have to come up there and help him to. Uh, get selling into a nursing home, you know, the last place we're going to be at, I guess. And we all got to go that way. So uh, he needs some help, nobody else to help him. Uh, his son doesn't want to do anything. So I guess my wife and I are uh, the only ones there. Yeah, well, that's, that's, well, that's good, that he got good that he got you. Standing in the gap, <laughs> trying to do yeah. something and everything, you know, because we're mm -hmm. hoping that somebody do us the same way. Standing in the gap for us when we have those problems. And if you're doing good and stuff for other people, Ted, something's going to give. It's like Oprah Winfrey said, you, you can't receive nothing if you got a closed fist. You got to open that hand up and give, and then you can receive and stuff. Also, you can give and you can also receive because your hand is open. But you can't do it if your hand's closed and you got a fist up there. So we giving as much as we can. So anyway, uh, we got, we'll got. we see you guys and stuff on Saturday morning. Bye-bye. Let me see.
what you trying to do? Spent the night just trying to find you. You the hottest one under the sun, and I'm under your spell. We're stuck just like glue. You ain't got the free crib, oh well. You and me can head to the hotel. Whatever we do, just don't tell. I don't need anybody all on my coattail. I feel your energy, and I ain't trying to fight it. Your vibe is way too exciting. I know I'm who you want to ride with. Don't fake it, I know that you like it. It's more than just emotions. I can't ignore emotions. All you gotta do is focus. Not the chills, to but you like it. You ain't 